Welcome to Alpha Wolf Capital. I'm Tim and I want to personally thank you for stopping by. This channel is designed to help small companies, both public and private, gain exposure with potential consumers, investors, even partners. Take, for example, today's guest, Jeff Thompson from Red Cat Holdings. Red Cat Holdings is the recent beneficiary of a nice contract with the U.S. Army with their arachnid family of unmanned intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance precision strike systems. Uh, Jeff is here to give us an update on what this all means and what to look forward to moving forward. The uh, replicator uh, program from the United States uh, is a topic that Jeff would like to discuss, as well as uh, opportunities potentially for uh, collaborations and acquisitions. But I'm going to let Jeff tell you all about that in just a second. This is not to be taken as investment advice. I am not a certified financial planner. This is for education and entertainment purposes only. I encourage everyone to do their own due diligence. Hey everybody, Tim from Alpha Wolf Capital coming at you with a, uh, this guy is in high, high, high demand. I don't know if you've seen, but there's articles in the Wall Street Journal. There's, I mean, George is getting pulled in on the Fox. I mean, you're you're everywhere right now. <laughs> Jeff Thompson from Red Cat. Um, this is the one thing I want. This is how I want to start this thing off. You and I have talked for a long time. You told me that things were looking good and you were doing all the right things, right? Yeah. People doubted when we went through that swoon, right? Congratulations, man. You guys deserved every bit of it, right? Right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. It was uh, five and a half years of hard work, uh, but I don't want to, I don't want to relive any of that. Uh, it's here. Um, it, it was a, it's a great starter contract, the way I'll put it. And just to clarify, we, we kind of talked about this on the town hall, which uh, sorry for anyone that couldn't get on the other day. We, typically have about 50 people on our quarterly calls. And when we signed up for Zoom to do this webinar, uh, Leah said, hey, is 500 people enough? And I'm like, yeah, it's got to probably be way, way, way more than enough. And within minutes, uh, we we were sold out and we had almost a thousand people trying to get on that call. Um, but anyway, we um, we gave some of the numbers uh, for the call. Sorry, my voice is starting to go out to these last two days. Um, the, uh, the contracts for 5,880 systems, uh, each system consists of two drones and one controller, um, around 45 grand. So you can do some math around 260 million as uh, Jeff uh, Hitchcock, who's been doing this for a long, long time, really helped us get this program of record. Um, he's been selling drones uh, for 20 years to the military. He thinks you get at least 50, sometimes up to 70% of the original contract in repairs, training, uh, and spares. So it, you know, 260 is just the beginning. It's probably gonna be much higher than that. And these programs go on a little bit longer. And, and on top of that, this you know, 12,000 drones was written pre-2018. We, we we think it went back to 2015. So with 10,000 drones a month being gone through and uh you know they they lose ten thousand that number is low i think now um one of our board members just got back from over there uh you know twelve thousand drones is nothing so we all everyone knows that's a small number um but you know we we don't know what the army's going to do it could be less could be way more um but that's a that's a great start and then the other branches the army the marines the navy air force uh, all the three-lettered branches, which a bunch of the three-lettered branches want, were about to buy teal twos until they, they were at the test and saw the teal three perform now the black widow. And they said, no, 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 we don't want teal twos. We want the black widow. Um, so, yeah, we're pretty excited about what this is probably going to do on top of the army contract. And when we say it's the tip of the iceberg, we, we truly mean it because it's a, a five and a half year process, stamp of approval, validation, and 
Some of the things we're doing with this Black Widow are never been done before. And we got a lot more exciting news about the Black Widow, but I'm going to hold off there. NATO also um, is been waiting for the SR contract uh, to uh, make it easy for them to buy and for them to get that stamp of approval. If it's a sole source, it's always nice for them to have that piece of paper that the U.S. Army spent five years uh, looking at this drone and we beat 35 other very large companies. So it makes it easier for them in a sole source. But uh, really don't want to uh, talk about uh, SR on this call. I want to get into um, Replicator, but uh, I'm going to kind of, uh, so the other thing that we were talking about before we went live uh, was um, our valuation. So a lot of people are like, hey, wow, my gosh, it's ran up really high and over 500 million now. But, you know, basically with the guidance we gave before 55 million and what we're going to get in SR will probably get us to 100 million. We haven't given an official guidance for 100 million yet for 2025, calendar 2025, but our peers all trade in the 20s times revenue. So at 500 million, we're, we're trading at, uh, you know, way less than that. If you put 22 times 100 million, it's 2.2 billion. Um, some people think that number is really high. So even if you go 10 times, just be super conservative, um, you know, we should be trading at about, you know, a billion dollar valuation, you know, so it's, it's easy to do that math. So we're, we're still a, a, a screaming buy, but now we have, we, we, we wake up every year with about a hundred million in revenue. So the lowest risk investment you could ever do is right now at so this very low. I'm going to kill the other thing that's out there right now because you did a you did that shelf right yeah so naturally everyone is wondering are you going to have to do a raise to get to you know manufacturing i mean how are you everyone you've never, yeah, been, so. you've never been a cap you've never been a big diluter right so but the shelf is, was big. It seemed big to everybody, right? That kind of freaked everybody out a little bit. Yeah. So, yeah, so whenever you put a shelf up, you, you put up a, a massive number um, and you, you you let it sit there. It's, that's why it's called a shelf. You put it up on the shelf. Um, uh, it might have gone effective already. Um, we, we, are in, uh, we actually had to do that because of the debt offering. We had to file the shelf. We would have filed one anyway. It's, it's good to have one. Um, in place uh, in case something exciting happens. We have no plans currently of uh, taking down anything off that shelf. Uh, like I said on the call, we have some additional debt available, which we might use in the short term till we figure things out. Um, but, you know, the the whole world, every investment banker on the planet's called us. <laughs> um, and some I just, you know, anyway, uh, I got to tell you, I've never, I, I just got off a call before I, I got on here with you with a very large firm that um, I got to go look this up and actually talk, talk to our SEC lawyers. I never heard of this. They want to do a way above the market offering. <laughs> I'm like, I, I've never heard of that. I'm like, when I, you, you say no enough and say, no, I don't want to dilute. I'm not going to do any discounts. And next thing you know, they're saying, let's do an above the market deal. I'm like, uh, and it was way above market. So uh, uh, I'm, I'm kind of. You're, you're, you're in a whole different world right now, right? I mean, yeah. Yeah. So we're, I mean, that's crazy right now. So, um, you know, and, and as we mentioned before, we've got a lot of our largest shareholders, kind of another weird thing. And we might want to go out and do a survey. Um, like, but let me just say, start with this. We're, we're going to do some assessment. We're building our forecasting and our, in our budget for 2025. Um, we, we, we are looking to do all of our capital requirements in January find out what we're getting for prepayments from the SR program of record, uh, which you usually get a good chunk up. You just don't know when it's going to come and you got to make sure that you, you know, can't wait on them because the government's always slower than it's supposed to be. But, um, you know, we're going to make, we're looking to make that assessment in, in January. And we are looking, you know, and, and some of the, you know, a lot of the, these large funds that want to give us money, um, you know, they're like, you know, what are you going to do if you do a raise, if you had to do a raise and we're basically doing a math calculation to, Make sure we don't have to slow down flight wave. And that's why I want to talk about flight wave and replicator in a minute. But uh, we're not going to go out and do a huge raise. If we do a raise, it'll be 
10 to 15 million dollars and at you know if it's we're trading at you now seven something or it's at 10 bucks in another few days after some of the cool stuff that's going to be happening um it's a few million shares and we trade now over 10 million shares a day so there's not going to be any flippers it's not going to affect the stock it's not going to take the stock down if we did that we don't know if we want to do that but one fund that's a very large shareholder of ours said uh, and, and maybe, I don't know if you can do surveys on, uh, I don't do the stock twits thing, but I know George is on there. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I don't think they can do surveys. Um, but maybe we do a survey because the one of the funds made the thought that why don't you rip the Band-Aid off for you know, 10 to $15 million offering and there'll be no overhang for people thinking that you're going to do a raise. I was like, that, I, I'm like, I'm not a trader. I don't spend all my day in capital markets. I'm building drones. So I listened to him and I said, you know, that that's an interesting thought, but I'm I'm thinking maybe George can put it out on a survey. <laughs> you know, I, I, I look at it like this. If you know, I've already I've had people ask me if this is a, a sell the news event. And if you've listened to to the conversations that we have had over the last three years, this is just the beginning, right? I mean you already said now your program of records that opens you up to every other federal program, right? They can just order it off a catalog, Matt, and no, don't have to go through any of that. You and I talked a long time ago about the, the contracts with NATO and, and things over in, in that realm of the world don't appear to be getting better. Uh, looks like things are actually heating up more. So I would think that the surrounding countries in that area are probably even getting more nervous and I, I distinctly recall you telling me that the, the contracts for some of those NATO countries were as big as SRR, if not bigger, right? They're, they're massively larger in, in, in multiples because, again, SRR was written in, in the mid-teens, <laughs> uh, 2015, 2016, pre-Ukraine war, pre-at least 10,000 drones being downed every... And they're not, they're not drones like Reapers and stuff like that, which are now useless, um, they are drones, mostly Mavics and FPV drones, and we're there to replace the Mavic. In our EW testing, we we beat we did just as good as the Mavic, if not better. So we're looking at ways to replace the Mavic in you know because we're we're a hardened drone. That, that's a plastic consumer drone that's not made for rain, dust, wind, and can't replace the arms. You have to send it back to the factory. So we're a much better drone than the Mavic uh, for warfighters. So the um, the, the numbers in NATO were massively larger, um, and they're, they're they're even if the wars all stop tomorrow, they are going to stockpile so they don't get caught short like the Ukraine's gone through. So I think everyone knows that NATO contracts are very much larger, but I just want to spend a, a, a little bit more time yeah. uh, on, well, let me just finish. We're not looking to do an raise right now. Maybe I'll have George do a survey about that, you know, peel the Band-Aid off and Get it out of the way so there's no overhang. I don't. I don't know if I believe that or not. Um, but uh, we haven't talked about replicator. We've ignored replicator. I don't even talk about it on our quarterly calls anymore because it's kind of been a mess. But I just want to go over some uh, the history of uh, replicator tranches so far. Yep. So the first tranche went to uh, the guys that do long range LRR guys like Aero Environment with a bunch of long range switchblades, right? The second tranche, right? So you look at LRR, they got the first tranche, right? And LRR, MRR, and SRR are all under the same office and controlled by the same stuff. So LRR guys got the first tranche one for replicator. Tranche two, which was announced not too long ago, was basically counter UAS technology. And then MRR guys all got announced on October 22nd. It's Ghost, Anderil, and PDW C100. Mm -hmm. By the way, I'm hearing some really great stuff about the C100. It's a great drone. Uh, a lot of people are really liking that drone. Very stable, very reliable. Can uh, has very large payloads. But anyway, the, the they were announced October 22nd, and last week, then the next tranche went to the MRR guys after they announced this. They were winners for down select for MRR. So. Um, we think we got some really good things going for us. Now that SRR is announced, we are the most popular drone size in the drone industry right now in, in wars. Uh, we're the most useful class of drone. We're much smaller than MRR and LRR. Uh, we also have the sentient hive, which we can do swarms with our new, newly minted 
program of record for SOR. And then the Edge 130 is already getting traction in Australia. In that region, it, it can fly for 60 minutes. It can do things that no other drone can do. We're moving into a new factory right after Thanksgiving. The, the Flight Wave guys, great team there, Trent, Doug, Eamon, all you guys, Larry, um, they're, they're a kick-ass bunch of dudes. They're going to really get that thing ramped up. So that drone is perfect for, for replicator. And the Edge 130 got invited. There was hundreds of drones in the Blue UAS list. They down-selected only like 20 new companies. 20 of the companies are there. The Edge 130 and the Black Widow made it through the first stage uh, down-select testing. They had a fly-off last week. Did really well. So... Uh, replicator, which we, we ignored on the revenue stream, on any guidance. I think we're now very well poised for, for replicator revenue. Um, we're actually meeting with the groups from replicator soon. Um, so we got a really lot of exciting stuff going on the replicator side. Um, and just frankly, on the Edge 130 is so great already. So, so the replicator program is meant to be essentially, it's meant to be get as many drones out as possible as fast as possible it's all about speed right yep and and they're in it i not in a, i guess in a, inexpensive compared to what they're with what yeah they're, they use the word they use the word attributable they, they're really just trying to say disposable drones like the ukraine if you use the r you know the dod's version of attributable it's three million dollars cool. so that's cool. that's it's they mean drones like ours right uh, so if you do a swarm and you take down a $30 million helicopter, that's that's a good use of a turtle drones like ours. Uh, and uh, our drones can fit on the front of boats. The the flight wave drone can actually, uh, it's designed to land and take off in water. We still got a little bit more work on that, but we're going to get there with that. It was originally made to look at re uh, ocean reefs. Um, so we're very well poised. Um, and we've got some really great tech that's going on the Black Widow that... I can't wait to introduce to the market. It's going to be game changing. Who, who came up with the arachnoid? Who, who came up with that, man? One of the best hires in the company, a, a person named Stan Nowak. He is a marketing genius. Um, he came up with all the names. He he made sure that everything fit together for the opening of the Black Widow, uh, the the web, which is the warfighter, uh, you know, electronic bridge, um, which George touched upon a little bit on the call the other day. Uh, we think that that controller could end up being a controller that goes across a lot of different programs of record, not just SRR. Um, you know, so there's some newfound revenue there. Um, pretty much everything's lining up for us that took five and a half years to do. Is uh, that is that controller the one that that UMAC made, or is it no, no, the, web, the web was well? It, it, it's I don't want to. See, I said I was going to keep it short. Now it's going long already. I'm sorry, man. Yeah. Uh, so uh, <laughs> we were supposed to not deliver a, a controller for the Army program of record, the SR program of record for the platoon level. Um, the uh, four months before the the, the final fly off, IOT and E, they said, "Hey, listen, we don't have a controller to use. We were supposed to supply one. Bring your own." We basically said, well, okay, what's the, uh, can you give us the requirements for the one that you were going to build for this? And they did. And we built the controller that they wanted that they, they didn't build to the almost the exact dimensions and size and processing power, the feel, the look, everything. We, we it basically took their requirements and built the controller. Um, and they didn't like our old control controllers too big. Um, gave them the controller for IoT and E. They loved it. Um, we're now integrating with some other of the uh, programs of records that we'll talk about that in the next few weeks. Uh, so we built it. They loved it. And that's $8,000 a system that we weren't planning on. And now it could not just be the SRR uh, uh, controller. It could go across a whole bunch of other programs of record because they didn't have that uh, unified controller that they wanted. So huge win for the company uh, and, and to the engineering team out at Teal. They did, they did a fantastic job there. All right, so I, I haven't heard anything bad yet. <laughs> I, I don't think we're. I don't think I'm going to hear anything bad. I, I think we're. We're. Uh, I think you're probably the happiest you've been in a long, long time. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually a little overdressed for these these meetings here. Um, 
the uh, you know uh, uh, they tell me that all the guys on Stockfoot's making fun of me, which is fine. Um, but I but I've ignored my wife, who I've been married to for almost twenty seven years, and uh, I'm taking her out to a nice dinner tonight after ignoring her for the last two weeks. Oh, you deserve it, man. I mean, this is uh, it's fantastic. You know, it's funny. I never I never sweated it, man. Not one <laughs> ounce. Well, it was so horrible where I had to like talk to you, knowing that we were so far ahead of the race since May. Um, you know, just we we heard some great things coming out of the test in May, and uh, I talked about this on the last uh, quarterly call. Is we basically kind of I don't want to say said scrap the last two quarters of revenue on the teal two for for twenty twenty four calendar because now we're switching. I'm so glad we're switching to a calendar year. So we have been spending the time retooling. Um, we've got like 400 teal twos, I think that we made or are making right now uh, that we will sell over the next few months at, at a discount. We've got a lot of people wanting them. It's a really great bird now. The, the, the team's done some incredible stuff with it. Uh, but the the focus for the last four or five months has been getting the factory ready for the for the Black Widow because we we had a good idea that we won, but no one ever told us officially. So we took a... You know, we're risk takers. We said, we think we won. Let's 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 rip the factory apart and get ready for the Black Widow at the, you know, it, it killed some of our revenue in the last two quarters. But we're thinking about 2025. That's we just the, the Black Widow is the future. The Edge 130 is also our future. Um, and so we had to prepare for that. And, and it now looks like, uh, you know, we could do from 55 to 100 to 120 million next year. We don't know our exact guidance yet, so don't take that as official guidance. I get it. I get it. I get it. Are, yeah, are, you, are you yeah. going to have to expand the, the the facility that you have that you already doubled? We're, yeah, since we 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 felt that we were in the lead, um, you know, and, and uh, you know, I want to I want to talk about Scotty. They uh, Adam congratulated me. Very gentleman like. I wish them the best. They just did a great raise, by the way, at a great valuation. So they're 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 doing some cool stuff over there. Um, but you know, we we are we are geared for uh, twenty twenty five. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, it was, it was, it... Well, so anyway, back to the the you know going from eighteen million from our first year of the TL two to fifty without SR. And then basically, hopefully close once once we get the L rip production contract in hand, we'll we'll notify the street of where we've got, we're going to end up with official guidance for 2025. Um, but you know, with that just being the army, the other branches are going to buy off this and the NATO. I wanted to ask you. So for Florida, when they had the hurricane, I saw yeah. that the order had gone through for it was the army. Um, what was it? Border? What was it? That uh, Army National Guard. Yeah. They, yeah. Um, so they, I was uh, kind of thinking to myself, how did they find? I mean, how were they able to? I guess order the that drone, right? No, it was the teal two. It was the teal two. Okay, it's teal two. Yeah, so it was the teal two. But it was a funny story there. They 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 ordered a bunch, and uh, we wanted to help for the hurricane, so <laughs> we offered to donate them however many they bought. We donate the the same amount for free. And they're like, you can't give us stuff for free. It's against the law. And it's like, <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah. So, so we were just trying to help them give as many drones as we could to them while people were, you know, were, you know, were hurting. So, uh, uh, but I, I think people really love the, the the Black Widow for these things next year. Um, so. So I'm going to tell you why I never sweated it, man. Because I've gotten to know you pretty well, right? And I was just thinking that if I was in your shoes right you were either the best poker player on the planet right because <laughs> you just showed no stress at all and i i'm a pretty calm dude but you know if they told me i was going to get uh, the the yay or nay in september <laughs> and we're going through october and i still don't know I, i'm i'm probably going to be a little bit <laughs> stressed out right yeah. well we 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 um you know we didn't know officially um until like a, again last week until they gave us the letter they call and tell you ahead of time that you won then they tell you the process that's going to happen over the next week or so it ended up being weeks since that um you know they did make their decision in september 
life, which is on the timeline, which they told us for, for yeah. four years. Right. So, you know, I apologize. I told people September because I was told September for four years. Um, the good news is it's worth the wait. We <laughs> want it. Now we wake up every year with revenue to start the year. Uh, and we're going to build on that. We're going to build the the Edge 130. That's that's eventually going to get into some massive programs, probably get into Replicator, we think. Are you, we believe done, are you, are you done with acquisitions or do you still have maybe some of, the, some of that? We, we got some great partnerships we'll be talking to the street about soon that are just going to blow your mind. <laughs> okay, I'll leave it at that. Uh, yeah. Anything else, man? You feel as though we missed anything? No, it's, uh, you know, this thing's already, the, the stock's taken off, but we are so, according to my, my calculations, to, against our peers, if you can look at our comps in the pub, in the market, not in the public market, those three are private right now, but probably a couple of them will go public. Their private multiples of, that, of, of revenue are in the 20s. We are trading way below them, and we should have a, typically 20 to 40% premium on those multiples as a public company. And our growth rate is actually higher than a couple of them. So we are. I didn't, I did not like the article in the, uh, the I didn't like the headline of the, of the wall street journal. Yeah, no, uh, to the, most of the world were very unknown. So Heather's a great reporter and Brett, they were tough in the interviews. Uh, they, they are, they don't do puff pieces and uh, you know, they, we were, we were a penny stock. And we were under a dollar in April. Yep. So they were telling the absolute truth. Um, but we were working our butts off to win this large contract. So now we are on the radar. Some of the largest banks in the United States on Wall Street have called me in the last two days. So we're we're on people's radars right now. But we are I, I believe that we are still way undervalued, even for what we just gave out for, for next year's guidance. So uh get in while you can. <laughs> uh here's what I'd like to do next. Right. I've never even I've never done an interview with George. I've never even met George. Right. Yeah. You're not far. Right. You, you know, from Salt Lake City. Maybe you should go do a do a, a in the factory interview. That's actually a really good idea. Yeah. Can I actually film anything in the, in the factory? <laughs> or yeah. is it all top secret stuff? I yeah. can't see any pictures. You'll get to see some of the factory. Anyway, we got to wrap this. I got to. Yeah. my. Okay, man. I'll let you go. All right. All right, brother. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you for tuning in to another CEO interview here at Alpha Wolf Capital. I hope you enjoyed today's interview. We had Jeff Thompson from Redcat, ticker symbol R-C-A-T. I hope you enjoyed today's interview. And if you did, do us a favor, give us a like. How about giving us a share? And while you're at it, make sure you smash that subscribe button. All of those things are extremely important to us here at Alpha Wolf Capital. And we appreciate you taking the time to do that. Until next time, stay safe. Alpha Wolf Capital wishes you the very best of success.